The past few months have shown us really the worst of the worst when it comes to centralized crypto solutions. We've seen hedge funds going bankrupt, we've seen exchanges going bankrupt, we've seen lenders going bankrupt, and of course this week FTX, one of the bigger exchanges, have filed for bankruptcy as well. The big question of course is if you still want to be in crypto, you want to be able to leverage trade, you want to be able to lend out your tokens and so forth, what are the solutions out there? Well that is exactly what we're going to go over in this video. The first step of course is to manage your own assets and not hand them over to a centralized entity that you have little or no control over. And even though I'm happy to see the price of the Trust Wallet token soar, because Trust Wallet of course is a self-custody wallet, and that means that people are finally getting interested in doing self-custody more and more, I do want to point out that there's a big difference between a hardware wallet and a hot wallet, and a Trust Wallet by itself is of course a hot wallet, just like MetaMask and a whole bunch of other wallets. This works, it gives you self-custody, but it's not super safe. If you want to go one step further, you will need to purchase a hardware wallet, the most famous one is of course the Ledger hardware wallet and I assume that especially now a lot of people will be ordering this one and thankfully good news there are a lot of alternatives out there. Another solution would be the Trezor wallet, they are a little bit cheaper, they have been around for a very long time so they are definitely a worthy alternative for the Ledger wallet. And if you want to have a really fancy hardware wallet and you're willing to spend extra money on this full color display then you might want to take a look at Engrave. Of course, besides these three options, there are a lot more different hardware wallets out there. And especially with what has been going on, I assume there will be coming a lot more hardware wallets in the future. Once you set up your hardware wallet, you can link it to one of the software wallets like the MetaMask, like Trust Wallet and so forth. And you can start interacting with dApps. As you can see on this page of Ledger, it isn't that hard to connect it. Just follow these steps and then you'll see that the Ledger wallet will be in your MetaMask or whatever wallet you use and you can use it simply just as any other software wallet. If you're completely new on using MetaMask or any other wallet, I suggest that you look at the video I made on MetaMask specifically. It will pop up in the top right corner right now. The next thing you do is find a decentralized exchange that you can do your trading on. One of the most popular ones if you want to do leverage trading is DYDX. They have been around for quite some time and they have a really good and functional interface. Getting started is pretty easy. Just put some funds on your ledger, make sure you have your MetaMask wallet installed on your browser. And the next thing you do is go to the website of DYDX. I will put a link in the description. Then you click on trade. Next you click on connect wallet. Then you select the wallet that you're using. My suggestion is to use MetaMask, but almost every dApp out there works with MetaMask. To set up our DYDX account, we will have to link our wallet. So in this case, we will link our MetaMask account. As we can see in the little pop-up, it contains two steps. It's the verify ownership, and then we have to enable the trading. So let's click send request. As we can see, the first request will pop up. Click sign. Then you'll get the second pop-up, which is to enable the training. Click sign again. And now we're ready to go and we can start depositing funds. So the first thing you'll notice, we don't have to create any account. We have an account automatically by linking our wallet and signing these messages. It also means that you don't need a password and you can simply sign in with your wallet. Next thing, of course, we have to put some funds on there. Um, right now, I don't have much in this wallet. It's just a test wallet. So we're just going to put on a little bit of Ethereum. There you go. And let's put on 0.02, for example. Another interesting feature that they added and that's new is that you can purchase USDC with your credit card, bank transfer and more, just as you would on a centralized exchange. In this case, we're going to use the funds that I do have in my wallet and we're going to click confirm. Just as before, I will have to sign a transaction. In this case, I will have to pay $8 to do this transaction for $24 worth of Ethereum. But if you have wrapped Ethereum, as we can see here in the yellow little area, you will be paying zero gas fees. It's just because I'm using Ethereum that I have to pay these gas fees. Anyway, just for the sake of this video, I will go ahead and click OK and sign the transaction. So once you sign the transaction, it will take a while for your funds to arrive in your account. It's also very important to know that you're not giving your funds to DYDX. In the background, the application makes a wallet for you on Starkware, which is a layer 2 solution for Ethereum. If you don't know what layer 2 is, don't worry. It's just important to know that in the background, they are making a second wallet that is linked to your MetaMask or Ledger wallet. 
No one else can access the funds, only you can. In this case, it only took about five minutes and as soon as the funds arrive in your wallet on Starkware, you will see an update on your dashboard. So right now I have $36 in my portfolio and we can start trading. The next thing you can do is click trade. We can see that we can leverage our $36 up to $700 if we want to. And let's do a little order for Ethereum. We want to sell Ethereum and we want to sell 0 0.01. We want to short it with 5x. And that means that we have a total of 180. And then we can say place market order if we want to. So you probably noticed that I didn't have to sign for a new transaction. This is as long as you're staying within the DYDX platform and you're using the funds that you put in the DYDX wallet, you will not have to sign for a new transaction again. You will only have to sign when you want to get the funds out of there again and put them on your mainnet wallet. Another popular alternative out there is called GMX and GMX is also working on a layer two, but this layer two is called Arbitrum. Just as with DYDX, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Once you arrive on the page, again, just click trade. Carefully read the disclaimer. Click agree. And just as before, you will have to click connect wallet. In this case, we're using MetaMask, but you can use any other wallet if you want to by using Wallet Connect. The first thing you'll notice is that we can't just connect using Ethereum mainnet. So this one is a little bit more complex. So if you're not used to adding new networks to your wallet, this might be too complex for you and it's best for you to use DYDX. Either way, once you click MetaMask, you'll see this popping up and we'll say switch to Arbitrum or if you don't have the Arbitrum network, click on add Arbitrum. I already have the Arbitrum network in my MetaMask. So I will be switching from Ethereum mainnet to Arbitrum by clicking switch network. There you go. We can now see that we're connected to Arbitrum. Of course, right now I don't have any funds on Arbitrum and it means that I will have to transfer funds from Ethereum mainnet to Arbitrum. And this is something that DYDX did very nicely because if I didn't explain to you what Starknet was, you wouldn't have noticed that you were switching from Ethereum mainnet to a layer two. So again, this is why GMX is a little bit more complex. But just as with DYDX, you can go long, you can go short, or you can simply swap your tokens. Now, if you're not interested in leverage trading and you just want to be able to put limit orders, then there are simpler solutions out there as well. One of these solutions is one inch. Again, go to the main page, click on launch DAP, connect your wallet, choose your network. By default, this will be Ethereum and then choose your wallet. In this case, again, we will use MetaMask. But as you can see, you can connect using several other wallets. Once you're connected, you can start swapping your tokens, or in this case, we can click on limit and we can place a limit order. And for example, we want to swap 1000 USDC, which I don't have in my wallet. In this case, it is easier to click this button and then we see the value of Bitcoin. Let's just assume that Bitcoin is going down to 14,000. Oh, that means that if Bitcoin hits 14,000, which is 16% under the current price, we will be receiving 0 0.07 in wrapped Bitcoin. Then we can choose how quickly the order has to expire. And let's just say three days. Then we click review limit order. Agree with the terms and conditions. And then we can sign off the transaction. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I hope I was able to give you some value. So in return, it would be really great if you can give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. As always, I like to finish off my videos with highlighting the different risks. And again, with decentralized applications, there are risks involved as well. When it comes to centralized exchanges, it is really clear what the risk is. We don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. They might be using our funds for shady stuff. And once they run out of money, they go into bankruptcy and we can no longer access our funds. The most important thing with decentralized solutions is that anyone who has access to the keys has access to the funds. This can be good and this can be bad. If you are managing your keys and your funds correctly, then you are the only one who has access to the funds. This means that if you write it down on a piece of paper and somebody else copies your seed phrase, then they will have access to your funds as well. 
If you write down on a piece of paper and you make a picture and it gets stored into the cloud and somebody gets access to your cloud storage, then of course they will have access to your funds as well. So it is very important to know those seed phrases are holy. Anyone who has access to them has access to your funds and you are the only one responsible for this. You cannot blame anyone else. This responsibility is on you. Next, it is very important to realize that people make mistakes. So in the case of a coder, they can write code. They think they have the optimal code. They think the code is safe. It is always possible that there is a bug or people find a way to exploit the code. So in this example, as we can see on Coindesk, DeFi protocol Curve Finance gets hacked for 570,000, which thankfully isn't that much. But there are also examples out there that concern several hundreds of millions of dollars being lost. And again, there is nobody you can complain to. So yes, even though things are a lot more transparent on the blockchain, you can see where things are going. It doesn't mean that it is 100% bulletproof. So the best suggestion I can give you guys is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Whether it's using centralized solutions, decentralized solutions, or a mix of different solutions, make sure that you keep in mind that there is always a possible situation that you lose everything. So if you're comfortable with losing 20%, then make sure that you are putting your funds in five different places. It can also be a very interesting strategy that you keep your funds on your ledger and that you just make a second wallet that you use for active trading and you only connect that wallet to a certain DAP. As soon as you made a successful trade, take out those profits and put those profits back on the ledger, the one wallet that you don't connect to any apps. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you made it all the way to the end, again, hit that like button. Please also post a comment Then I know you made it to the end. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.